Welcome to chapter 18, which focuses on arid or desert landscapes, but I've also included some interesting information on sinkholes. Here's an interesting picture of a desert, and what you see is what most deserts are like. There aren't a lot of sand dunes and other features or even some vegetation. We'll get into different kinds of desert landscapes in this chapter. Sometimes a desert, even though you might not tell that this is a desert, but sometimes deserts have water in them. So we'll get into reasons and types of water features that could be found in the desert. For example, we have exotic streams. So we're going to ask what exactly are those exotic streams? How does wind actually shape the land? What are various types of sand dunes? And what exactly are sinkholes and their causes? Common terms that we will see in this chapter will include types of streams that we see in the desert, aeolian processes, aeolian means uh, wind process, types of sand dunes like Barkhan, Transverse, Safe, and Star, and then a definition for a sinkhole. And on the right, you actually see a star dune, which is commonly found in movies that um, are portrayed in the desert. So running water in a waterless region. So we can get surface water in the desert, and probably the most famous type is the Nile River. The Nile River originates outside of the arid land in sub-Saharan Africa, flows through the Sahara Desert, one of the largest deserts in the world, and dumps into the Mediterranean Sea. There's so much water in this river that, it's, that it has enough, we'll say, um, a flow, enough energy to make it all the way up to the Mediterranean Sea. In Southern California, we often see ephemeral streams streams that actually have water only during the rainy season. So in the winter, when we have more rain in Southern California, we can see some of these rivers uh, actually having water in them, where in the summertime, the rivers do not have water. Coming from the Midwest, where we had water in the rivers all the time, it was quite interesting to see some rivers without water in the summertime. We can also get desert lakes where just like ephemeral streams, we have water during the rainy season and no water during the dry season. And sometimes these water features can show salt on the bottom. Owens Valley has several desert lakes that when they are dry, they have salt and a white coating on the bottom. The work of wind. Now compared to the, the work of water that we dealt with in chapter 16, the work of wind it has a relatively limited effect. It's basically zero right at the ground because of friction. But the higher you go, the stronger the wind will be or could be. And that's the effect of wind shear. And wind shear can actually shape and create some very interesting features in a desert landscape. Altogether, we call the processes that are shaped by wind aeolian processes. So we're going to focus on one type of desert feature, and that is of a sand dune. When there is fine sand and not a lot of sand, we don't really get any significant landforms. So for one term that I want to define, we have a slip face, which is the side of the sand dune not facing the dominant wind. In places where there are coarser sand and there is a lot of sand, we can get our characteristic sand dunes. So our sand dunes are actually move with the wind sometimes. And we can 
we can get a sense of what the wind is doing in a desert based off of the shape and the movement of sand dunes. So let's go over four types of sand dunes. The three most common sand dunes are one, the Barkhan. The Barkhan is a crescent-shaped sand dune with horns that face downwind. We have to have enough wind or enough sand, but not too much sand to create these individual sand dune features, and we have to have one dominant wind direction. Two, the transverse sand dune. Now we have a lot more sand. So instead of creating these individual sand dunes, we create sort of a ripple effect. Kind of looks like water, waves in a water on top. And again, we need one dominant wind direction. Now with a safe, which is the third kind, we have to have two dominant wind directions and these wind directions must converge. For example, in the deserts of, of southeastern California, in the wintertime, we often get winds coming from the southwest. But in the summertime, due to the monsoons, we often get wind coming from the southeast. So this can create long, narrow dunes. And then we have the star dunes. This, the star dune is created by having a lot of sand and three or more dominant wind directions throughout the year. This is a really neat photo from the National Geographic. Now the dominant sand dune in this photo would be these small sand dunes that you see. And these are considered Barkhans. But I also see some evidence of a safe and this whole sort of uh, conjunction or, or sort of more of a composite of sand would be possibly considered a transverse. But the only one I know for sure are the crescent-shaped Barkhan sand dunes. And then we have the other types. We have our transverse on the top left, sort of a ripple effect. We have our safes in the bottom left, long and narrow. And then on the right is our star dune, which is actually quite striking. This is uh, another striking view. I showed this one earlier in, in the lecture, but it, again, it's one of the best uh, pictures that I can find of a star dune. So now we're gonna change gears here and talk about sinkholes and exactly what they are and what are some possible causes. So as you see in this picture, it looks like someone just grabbed the ground and created a hole right in an urban area. Here's another picture, and it's very grim what these sinkholes can do. There's really no warning to them. This is a sinkhole that finally eroded away into a cave, which is one way that sinkholes can form. You may get underground caves, and you, you build your you know, infrastructure, your, your urban areas over these caves, maybe without realizing it, and then enough erosion has occurred on the ground to open it up to the cave, creating a sinkhole. Now, in California, sometimes we have sinkholes due to water. And in Florida, where there's a lot of limestone on, on the ground and a lot of rain, we get a lot of erosion of the bedrock. When that happens, we can get caves and other aquifers to form that will destabilize the ground above and eventually create a sinkhole. We could also get sinkholes due to pumping out water, underground water, get sinkholes from vibrations of new construction. So anything that destabilizes the land below, whether it's natural or human induced can create sinkholes. There are sinkholes all over the, the world, but in the United States, the Florida takes the cake here in terms of the amount 
or the, the number and concentration of sinkholes. It's quite amazing how many sinkholes have been reported just between Orlando and Tampa Bay. One person did die from a sinkhole, which is unfortunate. So what I would do too is, is go to Canvas and I have at least one or two videos. I believe one is on some of the desert features like Haboob, which is uh, basically a dust storm. And I might post another one on sinkholes.